terrified. Where he takes the Neo step and he starts to believe. He starts to believe. <laughs> Texas, welcome to a more Philly Union, the podcast where we swear to talk about the Philly Union, the whole Philly Union, and nothing but the Philly Union, with as few digressions as possible. We are your hosts. I'm C. I'm E. And I'm Paul. And two of the three of us are still in our right state. In, in the right state. Christy, Christy's in the alternate state. More ways than one. <laughs> so thanks to christy from check for checking in from texas uh to kick us help us kick off tonight uh you know our normal here we're starting with a little housekeeping the uh help us help the you challenge check uh we are up to 450 now downloads so thank you to everybody we're up 22 downloads yeah. since that last week it looks like uh and, and where are the new listeners from do we have any new listeners i guess and where are they from me so um we have two more downloads from england so uh hopefully that means those are actual return listeners so um that'd be cool if you're a return listener hey thanks for uh, uh for coming back uh, if you're a new listener hey thanks for giving us a listen and hey why don't you come back but um or shoot us an email. You all and... come back now, you hear? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we all got a little Texas going on. Um, <laughs> but uh, that, uh, Dukes of Hazard. What was the one that had that? You all come back now, you hear? There's a show that you all come back now, you hear? Yeah, what was that from? Anyway. Um, yeah, hey, drop us a line. If there's something you guys like or don't like, we're cool to you know, hear what you got to say. Um, so anyway, uh, we have a new listener from Illinois, so welcome and uh we do have a download in louisiana but i suspect um it's actually from two good friends that are traveling through the southeast right now so uh hey guys thanks for uh, giving us a, another state on the map um and california popped back up so good to see uh the folks in california um giving us a download so um yeah it's like pokemon we're trying to get them all <laughs> all right so uh Thanks to everybody, and uh, should we just jump right into the, We have two games to cover from last. Yeah, week. let's jump into it. We got we got a bit of uh, ground to cover. Although it, it's weird just having two of us sitting here. It's like a table missing a leg or something. Um, yeah, uh, or at least a stool. We're missing the third leg of the stool. Exactly. It's gonna be, now. Um, it's really just a competition of is it? It's down to you and me. Who's gonna get the uh, the intro quote? You know she's still going to find some way to win it. Yeah, exactly. I'll probably listen to what we recorded earlier. And it'll be like, oh yeah, that's that's gold. That's going in. Yep. For the union though, this week, uh, the union uh, Wednesday took on Orlando mm -hmm. uh, in Orlando. Mm -hmm. Battle down there. It looked like from from the way the the, uh, the jerseys were hanging on the guys very early. It looked like it was a very hot day out there. For yeah, them. it looked it looked stifling. And I believe this one was one where they rolled out the four four two. I probably should have kept the box. Yeah, score up to confirm that. No, it, this this past week's games was um, an ode to the four four two. Both of them were four four two. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I was surprised that um, you know Martinez started. I thought he was going to be away for for national team call up, but uh, obviously he he played in both. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and he had a and, had a small role in in one of them. So just a, just a tiny one. Just a tiny one. Yeah, yeah. Just just probably the biggest baddest goal of the union season so far. Yeah, man. Um, you know, shades of glassness with with a uh, little less power, a little more flair to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but definitely want to talk about that. But I think overall, once again, the union are showing that a two nothing lead is still a dangerous lead against this union team, especially in the first half absolutely yeah uh yeah two nil is not an easily defendable score against the union it seems like no and especially when the union have plenty of time to, to catch up which they did mm -hmm. you know it was a shame to get go down two to nothing um orlando they they played a good game again again the the this 
I don't remember offhand, but I think the Union won the last time they played in Philly, but uh, they seem to match up well. And and the games are energetic. They're they're competitive. The team's the players don't seem to like each other other in mm. a properly a competitive manner um you know a lot of lot of lot of getting in each other's face uh and but yeah i mean first half orlando managed to find the goal back in the net twice you know they they beat uh bendick uh twice you know you could argue whether or not you know blake may have made us play on on one or both yeah. of those uh I can't really fault Bendick for giving no. up either of those goals, though. I mean, it was a it was a breakdown. You know, the union stayed with it. You know, they 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 trusted themselves and they and then they 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 kept going. They kept making the runs, even when the ball didn't get. To, and sometimes they made the runs when the ball would have gotten to them. And somehow or another, making that run was enough to beat two defenders and the keeper and let McGlynn score from twenty five yards out in the in the sixtieth minute. Yeah, that was the McGlin- McGlynn chasse, so, as they call it. Um, yeah, what was um, it? A chasse. So it's not a shot and it's not a pass. It's a oh, chasse. I'm not familiar with that term. <laughs> it's men and blenders. So, <laughs> so uh, copyright, trademark, whatever. Yeah, got to make sure we properly uh, quote or yeah. uh, in the footnotes. It's a chasse. Because right. that goal, um, I mean, I don't know. If Attribute. You want. Yeah, I um, mean, he's outside the, the yeah. Orlando's 18. And you get... It was funny. It was kind of like, um, you know, when you're walking down a hallway and you're on the one side and or maybe you're not paying attention. But next thing you know, you find yourself and another person, you're headed towards each other and you both decide to take that mm-hmm. step to the way and you step in the same direction. And then you both try to step out of the way again. And then you both step in the same direction. Um, I yeah. feel like that's what happened on this McLingle. Like he sensed this, you know, what, what really looked like a, just a, a cross into the box to get on the, you know, to get to one of the union players in the box, but like, uh, I think it was probably Carranza was in there and there's, um, an Orlando, um, uh, defender, defender on him and just, and the goalkeeper was kind of positioning himself to kind of get into position for the header or the, 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 the shot that deflects off of a player. And what happened is nobody actually touched the ball. And then it just came, bounced off the ground. And at that point, you could see, like, in the keeper's, you know, in his face, you could just see his mind clicking over, like, oh, crap, no one touched it. And, like, quickly tried to dive <laughs> over to stop it. And at that point, it was uh, too late. It's kind of like the uh, the Bugs Bunny slow ball from the cartoons, right? Yep. Just like one, two, one, three, two three strikes, you're out. Um, but, I mean, that was, I mean, all credit to uh, McClellan. I mean, you know, it's an opportunity, and it it won his way, right? And uh, yep. That that got that totally. Yeah, I think it was actually Aura that made the run in the box, and you see him actually get sandwiched between two Orlando's defenders, and you know he's going, he's getting bounced around pretty hard in the box, um, and doesn't really have a shot at getting getting making the jump for the ball, mm-hmm. and yeah, exactly like you said, the keeper was clearly looking for it to be deflected in exactly. some way or redirected. Yeah, and nope, and and you know credit to McGlynn for actually putting it on frame. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, good things happen when you put the ball on frame, and that's exactly what happened here. What, what, what's McGlynn the saying? got the union back in the game. No, what's the saying? What's uh, there's a saying, right? Um, like practice and luck make opportunity, or something like that. I, I can't remember how it went, but it's like you know, um, well, you know, a little bit of salt in the wounds, I guess, was after the union got that goal and they're back in the game. It was just interesting. Kronzer just ran into the net. To collect the ball right because you know the clock's running it's the 60th minute yeah and we're down by one and as Carranza ran into the goal to get the ball and the keeper's doing that typical keeper trying to just slow things down and just like oh i just happened to be in the way <laughs> and Carranza just like totally hip checked him uh to get to the <laughs> ball and uh, the ref had to come out and just tell everyone to relax a little bit yeah well ca- he got a caution did he get caution for that uh, i don't know if he got a caution for it um i don't know because he got yeah. a caution in the second, well, the the keeper got a caution in, in the sixty first, first, and Carranza got a caution in, in the sixty second. So I wonder if that was that could have been at it. that play. I can't remember. That could have been because the goal was in the sixtieth minute, and you know maybe this yeah shortly yeah. thereafter. Well, I guess another goal came along in the eighty sixth minute, which was kind of interesting with the um, uh, Orlando player Kara, who uh, kind of 
brought the ball down in the midfield and in the process uh kind of elbowed Martinez in the face and then That's right yeah and then Kara like he showed a lot of you know he's a big dude and he just um muscled through like uh like Glesnes which that is non-trivial you don't meet many people that right. can muscle through Glesnes and uh actually got behind Glesnes and then McGlynn chased him down into the union uh, into the goal box and uh Kara crossed it and I I don't know who it was on Orlando but just Arroyo right I think yeah um but fortunately right the ref um um VAR popped up and he reviewed the foul against Martinez and mm-hmm. called the called the goal back and actually awarded uh, a yellow card to uh Kara uh, for the elbow um so that was a little um a yeah, quick reversal of fortune. VAR bail, bailing out the union a little bit there, yeah. but uh, <laughs> they, they got the call right. Yeah, yeah. VAR is becoming our twelfth man. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it it was it was a a rough play, um, but yeah, it was it was the right call, and, and credit to Orlando players. That was that was a well 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 orchestrated or well run attack. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah mm-hmm. it was clear the clear the foul was pretty clear although the guy did have what six inches on martinez so He's all he might dude. have been putting the arm out it, did, it definitely caught martinez in an unfortunate area yeah 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 what you think about uh bendick coming out uh during that like i mean fortunately the golden account uh bendick came out as you know mcglynn's chasing after carriers he's coming into the into the into the box and ben, Bendit came out doing the kind of like the goalie crab walk thing with the arms at the side, trying to make himself big. Um, but yeah, um, you know, once Kara got that cross off, there was no way Bendit was going to stop it from going out in front of the goal and then going in. Um, so keepers have a tough situation in a job like, or a tough job in a situation like that, because, you know, they have to watch the shot and they should be playing to stop the shot but they also have to worry about those passes mm-hmm. um, and i think in that case bendick as a keeper if i was playing that position i would have trusted my defender to try to you know hurt or shut the, the attacker out wide right. so i would have played for the shot mm-hmm. bendick though seemed to take a couple of steps out early before mcglynn really got to close him down and then he kind of found himself caught in no man's land yeah. and he was halfway between stopping the stop and stopping the pass yeah so he tried to do both and in yep. the end wasn't able to do either right. kind of got caught out yeah that's that's how i kind of read it you know that first moment as they're coming in it's like oh man i better come out and close off these angles and then it's like nope jack like, oh man now i'm mm-hmm. stuck out in the middle i'm i'm, yep. I'm hanging out to dry here so yep um, but hey, VAR saved our our keister, so hey, we'll take it. And then the union would turn it around and and find a, uh, uh, the the you know the tying goal off of a monster shot from from uh, Martinez. Yeah, uh, uh, it was a cross into the middle, if I remember correctly, that mm-hmm. the, the defense partially cleared. Uh, and, and Martinez played it on a one bounce volley and, mm-hmm. and and shot from 25 yards out. And it, I, 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 at first I thought it went off of a player. I'm like, how did that move Me the too. way it did? Me too. And I've watched it multiple times. And, and every time it looks like when you see it from the side, it looks like it's a CGI shot. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I was say, like, oh, it, it was almost like you expected it to bounce off of the, the keeper's face um uh like that one what was that one series of that one video um the the human wall oh, the guy scott, sterling? <laughs> yeah, scott sterling yeah like you almost expected it was so cgi that you expected scott sterling to, to, to <laughs> have it go off of his face uh but instead i mean uh-huh. it it's rising and it's bending away from the keeper yeah into the side net and mm-hmm. it was just a fantastic strike yeah yeah, I remember. So, which uh, do you put? Which do you rank higher, the strike or the 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 celebration, the team celebration afterwards? Well, I want to say the strike because I didn't. What was the team celebration? I, I 
What, what did they do? Well, it reminded me of the replacements where if you can't take the celebration, don't score the goal because <laughs> like the team just kind of mobbed Martinez. I, I thought I thought Bedoya was going to hurt himself chasing him down. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was very enthusiastic the celebration of Martinez's first MLS. That's goal. right, because it was his first goal. And when they said that, I was, I was like surprised. And as I was thinking back, I was like, yeah, I, I don't, he's never scored. Uh, so, I mean, hey, if you got to get a apparently first goal, you don't get much prettier than that goal. Shot. Yeah, apparently it was Martinez's 96 shots since joining MLS. Of them, 95 of them have been from outside the box. Wow. Uh, and it was the first one that he put in. It was also apparently McGlynn's first goal of the season. He hadn't scored before that. Really? Wow. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was an awesome goal. And I still remember um yeah, you know, when he when he put that shot in. And again, depending on which camera angle you you got when, on the replay, it looks like it deflects off of a player or it looks like it was CGI'd. It was an amazing goal. But it's funny when you watch it like uh the wide angles, it shoots and goes in. You just see Aura just like grab his head like, Oh my god, I can't believe what I just saw. <laughs> uh it's a it's a great expression on Aura's face as he's like just holding his own head like that was amazing. It was crazy, yeah, uh, and, and and definitely a, a wild celebration. I'm sure Martinez was very happy with the with the result, and then the Union were able to out and get that two 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 away a uh, point. Basically, stole three points from Orlando yeah. and got themselves one. Yeah, I mean, t- this was a this was a, basically a two two win. That's what it felt like a two two win. Yeah, especially with that that, that, that that tying goal from Martinez. Um, I would agree. Um, yeah, interesting. Just quick stats here. I was just looking at it from the MLS site, which might be different than what Apple has. Um, but it's it's interesting. The Union did not have. It was a non typical Union stat breakdown we had the majority of the ball which is you know, maybe that's why we didn't win because we didn't have the minority time possession mm-hmm. um we uh yeah and we had also the majority passes and we had the higher passing accuracy and usually we tend to trail in those those areas but um i mean i don't know interesting correlation doesn't mean causation um but uh just kind of interesting um, see if we start seeing that in future games where we don't do as well and it turns out we actually have majority of the ball and we're getting the most passes. <laughs> it's like, all right, we got to stop that. We got to give them give them the ball more. Or it's else like, maybe it means if the game had lasted another 10 minutes, the union would have found a, a winner. Would have been uh, nice. I like I like that idea. I think that's what it means. Exactly. I also like it to think a... by by playing the lower possession ball, it's it, it's the whole adage, uh, the sooner we get behind, the sooner we can get caught up. <laughs> Well, the, the, Martinez's performance was enough for getting him onto the uh, the team of the match day. Yeah, uh, I don't think he won Player of the Match Day for that for that uh, match day twenty one, but uh, he certainly earned it with that that blast. You know, that's going to be up there with. I mean, it'll, it at this point, it's got to be the Union's goal of the year, so and it's far. certainly going to be up there for MLS goal of the year. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's- I agree. Definitely. So far. I mean, we're only we're only halfway through the season, so there's still plenty of time left for something else to someone else to do something incredible, crazy, mm-hmm. cra- amazing. Mm-hmm. That's that's awesome. Yeah. And then moving forward to Saturday, the union returned home to welcome the uh, the messy less uh, Miami dun, dun. into Miami. And uh, they set an attendance record, right? Yeah, I heard that they had um, they were sold out, and they think they had something like a, a thousand standing room only seats or, or tickets sold. Yeah, yeah. Um, U- Union, uh, you know, front office making good use of the uh, the messy rumors and people not recognizing the fact that uh, he actually isn't <laughs> coming for a few more weeks yet. <laughs> That's I fine with the us. End, there was was that was there was that one social media post that the Union po- put up there of a guy with a sign that said I flew 12,000 1200 miles to see this soccer goat and he's just all looking sad and he just kind of drops his sign so apparently he flew <laughs> in to see Messi play for the first time in the MLS 
or in oh. MLS. And uh, yeah, he's not actually there. Wow. I'm, I am a little surprised I, I, that it had that large an effect on the attendance. I'm glad it had that large effect on the attendance, but um, you know, in the information age, it's just ask Google if Messi's going to be playing for Miami anytime soon. And um, well, Hey, other people's yeah. losses was our gain, you know. Um, but it was definitely a very fun game to be at, at least if you're a Union fan. If you're a Messi fan, uh, it probably wasn't so great. But uh, Or you're a Miami so, fan. Certainly, if you're a Miami fan, it was not a good game to be at. Yeah, exactly. It was Bedoya's 200th game for the Union. Wow. Uh, he's one of only three players to reach that number. Uh, the others are Gaddis and and Blake just so, for the union or an MLS just for the union just for the union that's okay. just for the union yeah, okay yeah yeah I mean Gatt- Gattis uh you know had the had the team record for most games played up until this year when Blake surpassed him and um you know now Bedoya has reached the 200 marks I was that do you know how much more Gattis and uh Bedoya uh, um I don't know what okay. what number Blake is at okay yeah, I, I, I don't I don't remember seeing that. I'm sure it was in there. Uh, let me pull up the article while we're talking. But yeah, I definitely that doesn't doesn't say here. Um, yeah, but that's I mean that's great. It's one of the reasons that we talk about and we've you know I don't know if we mentioned it on the podcast or not, but we're both of in mind that Bedoya's name's going up into the Ring of Honor. Whenever he decides he wants to retire, especially if he yeah. finishes his career here at the mm-hmm. Union, yeah, I think he's and, kind uh, of a, a shoe in for the Ring of Honor, and of course, Blake is right there too. Whenever that sad day comes, yep, when he decides to step yep. down, yeah, and, I mean, Gaddis may still be maybe may still be playing, and he may be playing for Cincinnati, but if he decides to take a one day contract and retire as a Philadelphia union player. He'll be up there as mm-hmm. well. Even if he doesn't, in all honesty, I, I could see them giving Bla- a guy that honor after a couple of years. He wouldn't be, he wouldn't be the next name to go up into the ring of honor, but in a couple of years, I, if you, after he retires, I could see him getting that. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. congratulations on Bodo- from to Bodoya. You know, he's, he came in as a second half substitute in the Orlando game. Uh, um, I think, right? Yeah, uh, pretty sure he came in as a substitute in the Orlando game, and then he started the Miami game. So, you know, after being out for a number of weeks there injured, it's good to see him back into the back in the game. Uh, and the team responded. You, you can definitely see they they're more comfortable in the attack with Bedoya mm-hmm. on the field. And uh, they certainly came out to attack Miami. And, and uh, it didn't take them long Nope. Uh, before they finally started generating some pressure. Uh, and one of them resulted in a corner kick. You know, an attacking play ended up over the end line. And, and Wagner, uh, despite the fact that he's been a little frustrated with how many crosses he's put in, the Union <laughs> haven't been able to, to convert. The last few games, they've actually started converting, and he, this time he managed to find Glasnus. And Glasnus had a very nice glancing header and just beat the keeper. Yeah, was, you know, couldn't have, couldn't have planned it better. Yeah, I started to remember the the last time the Union scored off a corner kick. Um, right, because this that whole I think that's a statistic you shared, Paul. Right, that more often than not, mm-hmm. corner kicks don't result uh, in, a, in a goal for the team taking it. Um, but what they did, yeah, does... you're more likely to score while defending a corner kick than you are when you are taking a corner kick. <laughs> Maybe that's why you start seeing more teams like on the corner kick, they just pass it back to a player on the wing and just come in to negate the, the corner kick effect. Um, yeah, but it's, there's also demonstrated that uh, Glesnes can also score with his head and not just <laughs> with his foot from you know. <laughs> 50 yards out so uh he's the now, not just uh, that howitzer of the lake he's got yeah he's now uh he's now a triple threat so while the uh the 
Union's first goal was a combination of, of two defenders, you know, Wagner to Glesnitz's head. The Union's second goal would come later in that sec- in that first half, mm-hmm. which was a combination between two of the triangle of death there, Aura laying off a play to, to Karan uh, inside the box. Uh, you know, Aura's kind of got his back to goal. He's got a defender yep. on his back. Yep. Gets a pass into the box and sees Carranza making the run. And just lays it off. Um, just so smooth. buries it. So smooth. Just mm-hmm. brings it down and immediately just feeds it right to Carranza. And good on Carranza too, yeah. right? He came charging in, you know, as the ball was kind of arcing in towards the uh, um, Miami box. And there's that defender, you know, looking up to, you know, control the, the ball when it comes down. <laughs> and Carranza just came running in. And you could see that moment of hesitation that... Carranza yep. created in that defender that made that defender just then miss the ball and it went right to Aura, who just again just laid that right into that oncoming Carranza. Uh, yeah. Carranza just feels like he's playing with confidence right now. 100%. Like, you know, one of the hardest things that forwards have to do, and what a, you know, a lot of, you know, I coach and so a lot of kids like playing forward because they like scoring goals. Sure. But, you know, one of the hard things to do as a forward is make those runs for the entire game. Like mm-hmm. you're making those mm-hmm. runs, you're making two, three, four dozen runs mm-hmm. to open space, and you may have no shot at getting that pass, but mm-hmm. you got to make that run to pull the defense apart and make space behind them for your teammates to use. And Carranza does continues to do that. Mm-hmm. And uh, sometimes, sometimes good things happen and you end up getting the ball back in the right spot. Like he did this time. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like, he plays like he knows his goals are out there. He just has to go get them. That wasn't the end of the pain for the, uh, for, for Miami though, because the first half would, would see one more goal. Uh, and, and that was with uh, Flock getting a, a very rare uh, goal. And if the previous goal was pretty, this one was just really pretty because it was just <laughs> Gazdog to uh, to Bedoy. Uh, sorry, Baizo who passes it to Gazdog who uh, has that really nice little cheeky heel pass to Bedoya, who just again. Kind of like Aura in the previous goal, he's kind of got his back to the goal, and he just lays it back to Flock, who comes running in. It's like one, two, three, four. You know, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's like jazz. These guys are just you hear like Sweet Georgia Brown playing over the loudspeakers when they're doing stuff like this. It was just <laughs> so so pretty to see. You know, <laughs> like Bedoya to kick the ball up, catch it in his jersey, and and act like where to go, <laughs> where to go. Um. Yeah, good for Flock, too, because he's hungry for goals. Uh, even in the Orlando game, uh, when uh, uh, Carranza, uh, it was either Wagner or Aura who crossed the ball across the the um, Orlando box, and it landed at Carranza's feet, who took that point-blank shot. And credit to Orlando's goalkeeper, he got out and blocked it. Stop. But mm-hmm. Block is standing right there in the middle of the box, and he's doing like, he's pointing right at his feet, like, I am so <laughs> open, what are you doing? So... Uh, this is kind of a nice uh, compensation now for in this game. Flock finally got his uh, his goal here. Yeah, I mean, Flock may have been pointing to his feet, like, "What are you doing? I'm wide open." But I think Flock would know mm-hmm. Carranza's going to take that shot 100 percent of the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so you know, if he complained, yeah. it was only half hearted. And 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 yeah, you're right. Flock has really poured on the attacking side of his game this season. He's starting to really step up. Um, there was a game earlier in the season where he had to play as the uh, six with Perea and Torres in front of him. That wasn't so didn't go so well. Yeah, but there were other games where he has played in that defensive midfield position or where he's played out left. And you know he's he's definitely feels like you know he's got the defensive side of his game really clicking right yeah. now to the point where he's starting to get adventurous with the attacking side. Like he's starting to make these late runs. Yeah, um, and he's starting to uncork some shots. I don't know exactly how many shots he has this season, but I, I would be confident to say he's probably had more shots, uh, more shots so far this season than he has in any one season in the past and probably more shots on target than he has in any one season in the past. I would, I would wager a cup of coffee on that too. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I don't know if there's something that they're trying and training or what, but it does feel like block is kind of given the clear to like, if you want to push up and try to attack, go for it. Um, and like I said, he's, yeah. he just looks hungry. He wants, he wants to score. So going into half, you know, the union was up three to nothing. It felt like it was pretty well in cruise control. Um, you know, M- Miami did come out and they got the first goal after after halftime in what would the, uh, the 50th 50 minute? first minute, 50, like 50th that, yeah. minute. Yeah. And, you know, there was a little bit of worry that, oh, well, is this going to be, you know, are they going to prove that three nothing is a dangerous lead? <laughs> but. And I didn't really get the feeling watching the game that um, that it was like there was a big momentum shift. Like, yeah, they got a goal, sure, um, but it, it doesn't. It didn't really feel like something scary. Yeah, uh, and yep. uh, so yeah. the union would continue to pressure though, and they they managed to negate that one goal later on in the half. Uh, with what was eventually ruled an own goal. Off that of, makes uh, sense. David Ruiz. Um, I have to admit, watching it in full time in, in full speed in it live, I couldn't tell if it actually went off of Carranza. Like at first, the announcers were saying it went off Carranza, and it seemed like he got that goal, but it was a weird angle. Like it, if him, it, it, he would have had to like kick it like straight down into the net, into the ground to get it to bounce up the way it did. And, um, you know, it was on, on like subsequent watching, you see David Ruiz kind of sliding in to try to make a play on the ball or pe- play on the pass. Cause Oro had, mm. Oro had, you know, gotten the ball into the box and saw Carranza making the run. And he tried to make the pass. And as the ball is coming across, Ruiz slides in mm-hmm. and to try to make a play on it and ends up, going over the keeper and into yeah. the net. Yeah, that contact between the ball and, and Kranz's foot, it just, I couldn't figure out what happened to create that just anemic arcing kind of a lob that just went right over the keeper. It's like, did Kranz actually touch that oddly or did something else happen? And, uh, you know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's something like, having to do with tenant and there's some equivalent thing happening just in reverse time. It just made no <laughs> sense. It wasn't quite a no <laughs> slow motion. <laughs> oh no. What's going on moment from the keeper because <laughs> it was a little too bang bang for that, but you did kind of feel a little bad for it. Yeah. For the, uh, Miami keeper. Yeah. It's, it is that whole thing where time just slows down. It's like that, when you have that like dream when you're trying to run and it's just like you feel like you're moving through a last uh um molasses i think that's exactly mm-hmm. what that keeper was feeling like it's like it's right there two feet away from my fingers and i just can't get to it goal yeah 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 and then and then after that you know it felt like the game was pretty much over once it was 4-1 and yeah um I will say it was very clear. You could hear the chants going on around yep. the stadium. The, the the sons of Ben with the the na 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 na. Hey you, yeah. Uh, chants were going around. It got real loud for a while. Mm-hmm. And I'm just pulling up the box score real quick. There weren't a lot. There weren't really any disciplinary. Call, uh, there were. I mean, Martinez got it. We got a card in this game, and yeah, Aura got a, a card otherwise. in this game. But uh, you know, after that, it, it's not like it got real chippy. Um, it seemed like everybody was just satisfied with the the result, and yeah, they they the game was still competitive. They, you know, they were still trying things, but um, I don't remember any particular. Am I mem- misremembering any like opportunities later on into in the second half? We're talking about uh, not the. Um, let me see here. Um, I did have the so. In the 65th minute, right? McGlynn had that shot on on goal. Uh, it was fairly long range, and uh, it just hit the right post of the goal and then deflected out. But, man, that was mm-hmm. just a bullet of a shot. And it was interesting. I mean, I know he's he's literally getting older. He's growing up and getting, you know, he's growing, right? But when they showed, like, the camera cl- uh, was uh, close up on him, he just looks, he looks beefier. I mean, he's still fairly thin you know guy but he he doesn't look as like 
the skinny high school kid like he used to. Right? He seems just a little bit more, he's <laughs> getting a little bit more mass on those bones. And um, yeah, it's, it's no hitting surprise. The, that, hitting the weight training room. Exactly. Is, yeah. Is paying off for him is what you're saying. Huh? Yeah. That weight gain 5,000. And, uh, and, you know, it's no surprise he's starting to deliver these bullet shots like that. Um, man, if it was just like two inches to the left, you know, it would be 5 1 at this point, you know. Um, or at least this game would be 5 1. Um, quick thing on stats here, um, kind of getting back to the more standard trend for union wins is we won this game 4 1, and yet it's the complete opposite. Possession, we had basically 31% to their 69%. Uh, wow. Passes, they doubled the number of our passes. We had 301 to their 688. We had the lower passing accuracy. So it's like, as long as we underachieve on those stats, we see, it seems to be a correlation you that seem we do to, better. <laughs> seem you know? to win on the uh, the, the score, scoreboard, which is where it's more important. Yeah, if, if the union was like, you know, a high school kid, they'd be like, hey, isn't isn't your exam tomorrow? I was like, yeah, I'll just study in the morning. <laughs> like, what you get? I got an A. <laughs> uh, so yeah, without Messi and without you know um, the super, any the superstar or well, not, the, Miami actually had some decent players. I mean, Martina, oh, oh, Martinez, Martinez, sure. or Joseph Martinez was out there. Um, you got you got um, you know, there, there are some skilled players there. Um, yeah. But uh, it just never really felt like it was uh, a danger for the union, and like like we predicted, the union got a comfortable win. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, quick, so I think right. we we played we played Miami earlier in the season. We lost, I think, two one, right? And I think we were, if my notes correct. are correct, two one or thing. And it was at home. We played. This is the second time Miami ha- has been to Philadelphia. Is that correct? No, no, we played in Miami. I think it was the second game of the season. We lost two to nothing in Miami. Yeah, we, uh, yes, you're right. You're right. You're right. I'm mixing up with, uh, yeah, we were down in Miami. Okay. So, yes, this game was a nice little bit of, uh, balancing of the accounts, uh, in terms of playing Miami. So, um, I guess we are kind of in the lead now with our 4 1 victory to our previous 2 0 loss. Yeah, we're up four to three on aggregate. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um even if they've got the away goal edge. <laughs> I'll have to see if we meet them again. And yeah. uh if we do, that means that you know, probably Messi will be be on the team. Uh just a little so- aside here. Messi's not due to join the team for like four or five more games. I think the first game that he's likely to play. For Miami is the U.S. Open Cup semifinal, um, and by the time he actually joins Miami for uh, for MLS play, they'll have like twelve games less left in the season. Wow! And so the, you know, I remember reading or listening to a podcast talking about like what's that like? It means that they're, you know, likely Miami's going to have to win something like with Messi if they don't turn things around beforehand and start getting some more wins. So yeah, it's a, definitely an uphill battle, but if, you know, if one player can come in and, and influence a team like that and get on uh, the postseason, that would be huge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, whenever Messi does officially join the team, you know, whether that's 12 games, 11 games, you're going to have that many sellouts from there on out to the end of the season. The other thing too, I, I didn't know about Miami because uh, I know they parted ways with um, with Neville uh, a couple of weeks ago, right? And yeah. uh, so they have an interim coach in place. It's Javier Morales from Real Salt Lake. Yes. So yes. That's yeah, right. it's it's good to see him uh, still in the league. Good to see him, uh, you know, putting on the uh, the the coach's whistle there. Um, so I was I was very pleasantly uh, surprised to see uh, not surprised. I was. Very happy to see that Javier Morales is still kicking around, and now he's uh, he's leading uh, an MLS club. You know, and I appreciate yeah. him. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty confident Miami's going to bring in a, a a a coach before Messi gets here, and, and some of the other big names because yeah. they're, they're going to need somebody who can manage the club. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I agree. It was neat to see him there. Yeah, and um, 
you know, didn't go so well for his side, but you know, it's the union, you know, as, as fans of the union, we're moving forward now. Um, and after that game, then the union are currently in fourth place still. But yeah. They're now they're, they're only nine points behind Cincinnati. So we're closing the gap and, a little bit. Um, they're one point behind Nashville, two points behind New England, and nine points behind Cincinnati. So still have a ways to go, but you know, definitely trending well. Uh, all four of those teams have double digit wins. Um, Cincinnati, though, they're just crazy tough at home. They're 10 0 and 0 at home. That's Pat Noonan's doing a great job. It's it is kind of interesting to see how they are just pulling away from the uh the pack. I hopefully, you know. As the, you know, the proverbial teacher to the former student, we can climb past uh, um, New England and um, who was the other team? Nashville. Nashville. And Nashville, right? And get to them and I'll have like a, you know, you know, give them, give Cincinnati a run for the money for uh, who who, uh, finishes top in the East here. Yep. Miami is still down at 15th. You know, and and uh, they're four points behind Toronto, so they've wow. got a quite, a quite a hole to dig their way out of. Uh, some further news out of the week: um, Carranza was named a team of the match day for match day twenty two, and the Union took Man. on Miami. How many does he have so his far? Fourth time, his fourth time this season that he made in the match day. Man, that dude! I'll, I'll be happy if we still have him next season. I'll be happy if we still have them come August. You think so? I mean, I think there's going to be trust. Uh, yeah. Whether or not he's, you know, they they get the you know the deal in place and he's through the end of the year, yeah. I could certainly see Ernst making that deal. Yeah, but I could also see him, you know, whoever he was going, insisting that he he be a part of preseason training if they needed yeah. to be there. Yeah, I could I could see that that option as well well i'm not looking forward to him leaving let me put it that way though. yeah because he's been playing very very well for the mm-hmm. union and, and mm-hmm. he brings he brings a lot of those runs like we talked about to the to the team he makes a lot of those you know those off ball movements that, that that really break up the defense and he's just ruthless like you know he he's not always on target but he's going to take the shot you know when he gets the ball in the box he's going to do everything he can to make a shot you know, I, I don't want to overgeneralize or whatever phrase applies here, but, you know, I feel like years ago, right, when the union were struggling, um, and I remember having these conversations, I felt like there was like a, a confidence problem. And maybe that's just me projecting onto the team, but, you know, we play these games and and I would say like, even though we're up by two goals, I feel like we're always in threat of losing because I just, yeah. you know, I felt like the team didn't have that confidence. And the past couple of years, and it really, we're really lucky that it seems just to keep continuing. And I, I'm sure this is all the elements of the coaching and the training and everything's coming together. Um, but Carranza kind of embodies that in my mind. When he's on the mm-hmm. field, mm-hmm. he just, the way when I see him play, he just plays like he knows there's goals in this game for him and he's just going to go get them. Like we could be yep. down, like when we, we have been down two goals. And he's still just, it's not a desperation or an aggression. It's just this expectation that I'm going to get these goals. Yeah. I'm going to go get them. And it's a good way to phrase it. And there's this whole structure behind him. I mean, it's the triangle of death. I mean, Aura's is getting goals now, right? God's dog, actually, I feel like he's actually starting to drop off the, the goal tally. He's letting these other guys get the goals <laughs> a little bit. Um, but know, we're not getting the penalty kick calls anymore. So you know he hasn't he hasn't he has to actually score them from the run of play instead. <laughs> Daniel, that's not got... to slight it. PK PK goals are not easy to take. Yeah. Uh, but you know the, the he is having to find them, and as a midfielder and attacking midfielder, scoring goals in the run of play is difficult. Yeah, yeah. He's just going to have to go <laughs> out there and get them himself. Well, I mean, if he can return to form like he had last 
season where he was an MLS uh, MVP finalist. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you combine that with Oro's play and Carranza play, and now with the return of Bedoya and, and way Flock and McGlynn have been stepping up. And mm-hmm. yeah, I, I mean, every team out there has to be afraid of the Union. Yeah, especially having to come to Philadelphia to play them. Mm-hmm. This place is getting loud, and it's it really is. exciting to hear the crowd get into it the way they have been. Um, you know, the Sons of Bennett have been doing a tremendous job uh, making this a, a real fortress and a real, un- real uncomfortable place for uh, teams to come. Yeah. Uh, there were there was an announcement of the uh, All Star roster mm-hmm. for for this year. Um, Union, 18 teams re, uh, represented in the uh, the all-star roster. The union ended up with one uh, all-star player uh, voted in or selected, Jose Martinez. Uh, I think it's his <laughs> first time as a MLS all-star, and he's going to get to take on Arsenal in yeah. the all-star game in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I believe it is his first call-up to the all-star team. So, yeah, man, that was that was good news. I'm actually a little surprised. It's just one from the union, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I guess, is is the All-Star game occurring during Gold Cup? July 19th. So it'll probably be right after Gold Cup is finished. Okay. So, okay. yeah. I'm just surprised, you know, like Blake didn't get the call up. And even Carranza, for that matter. I thought he might get the call up too. But, um, I mean, Martinez deserves it. And kudos to him man congratulations that's awesome not that it needs me to tell him congratulations but you know, I, was glad, I was glad to see it yeah I'm, I'm just looking through the rest of it i mean it's kind of cool kai kamara got picked it got picked by the commissioner um i see Lu, lucio acosta luciano acosta that's that's a that's a pretty good pick you know uh tiago almeida um trying to look just uh, jose martinez yay honey mokhtar is a pretty easy pick ricky Pouge, lucas zellerion yeah i mean there's it, it's it's a good good group of of players but i'm really surprised none of the union defenders got in yeah that's the other one too, or blank yeah. like this glesness right yeah. mls uh defender of the year didn't get called up for the all-star team yeah i'm playing out wide and you know, I'm, I'm, I mean I know that the I know the all-star team is is much is, is not about defense um but still I would have expected somebody like uh Wagner to be an interesting selection because he put so mm-hmm. many crosses mm-hmm. into the box yeah I like to think that when they were selecting the all-star team it actually was like an overwhelming majority of union players that were going to get picked but they realized like we can't do this and so they contacted the union and they let the players, you know, discuss it. And they were like, hey, Martinez hasn't been on the team yet. Let him go. Uh, you know, we won't send the other four guys along. You know, he can carry the the union banner for the, uh, the all-star team. So it was very selfless of our guys to do that. So not only are <laughs> these great athletes, but they're also these consummate gentlemen and, and you know. <laughs> and, you know, the game is being played in D.C. and Wayne Rooney as the coach of DC has been, you know, selected as the coach of the uh, all-star team. So you kind of knew that there would be a couple of, you know, that would get DC at least one, if not two selection. And they did. They ended up mm-hmm. team two players. Uh, FC Cincinnati was the only team with three players. A couple of teams that did, you know, Atlanta got two. Columbus had two selected. DC, as I said. LAFC, you know, they fairly, you know, uh, you know that that seems like a reasonable select team to select two from. Yeah. Nashville had two, Hani Mukhtar and Zimmerman. Mm. Um, and then St. Louis is the other hey. team that had two selected. Hey, all right. You know, Where do you go, St. Louis? And, and, you know, 18 teams out of what 29 or 30 teams uh had had are sending representatives that means almost half the teams you know or or 12 yeah. uh, basically uh 40% of the teams are not sending players there so it's kind yeah. of interesting all right so congratulations to El Brujo for that uh, he certainly earned it well deserved hopefully it'll go well for him 
Hopefully he won't break too many ar- Arsenal <laughs> legs during the game. Yeah, when they see Let's him just hope out. he doesn't get a red card in the yeah. All Star game. <laughs> yeah, I like to think the uh, Arsenal yeah. sna- uh, staff is going to kind of visibly clench when they see Martinez come out in the field and be like, "Oh man, come on, don't hurt any of our guys." Before the season starts, <laughs> no starters anywhere near him. Okay, <laughs> yeah. no starters anywhere near him. <laughs> yeah, no, that'll be interesting to see on the nineteenth of July. Uh, other international news: uh, Gold Cups play for the U.S. and Jamaica started this weekend, mm-hmm. uh, and and uh, Damien Lowe actually scored a goal in the thirteenth minute off of a diving header. Yeah, that was. And, I uh, saw the replay on that. That was just a gorgeous goal. Mm-hmm. You know, for whatever reason, the the U.S. defense just didn't pick him up, and he made he made the most of it and he powered that shot past Turner. And Turner didn't really have a chance at him. And um, the other thing I did note was that Blake. It seemed like he had more saves, but he ended up having three saves, and at least those three were really nice saves. And a couple of times when he smothered chances by the U.S., um, he did get a caution, I, I noted, right about the 85th minute, I mm. assume for time-wasting. Mm. Um, and then the U.S. ended up tying it in the 88th minute, so he probably was a little salty about that. But <laughs> same point, 1-1 one, one draw, Jamaica's mm-hmm. got to be okay with that. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, I think playing, it, I think they played at Chicago Stadium in, or uh, Soldier's Field in in Chicago. Yeah, I, I think this game is kind of like what they say about the uh, you know compromise. Both parties walked away feeling um, like they uh, didn't get what they deserved, right? So we'll have to see what what happens moving forward for the U.S. and Jan- Jamaica, but uh, definitely an interesting start. The only other item I had here that I wanted to mention was that there's a new episode of the uh, the Union's YouTube series called the mm-hmm. the, uh, the Union Way. Mm-hmm. I've watched the first two episodes of it, and they're very entertaining, very engaging. Mm-hmm. Um, it seemed like they were going to try to do it more often during the season, but I guess they've gotten a little busy. Mm-hmm. With, you know, 25, 26 games in the season played already. I can imagine why, but. Uh, social media team for the union is really doing a bang up job. And this yeah, is a, a high production quality mm-hmm. kind of looks like, um, you know, like a, like an NFL film style yep. documentary of things going on behind the, 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 the scenes. And I, I, I really enjoyed the first two episodes. I have not yet had a chance to watch this third one, but it's called the comeback. So we'll have to see where, you know, probably about all these, you know, games from behind that the union are finding ways to get some points from. <laughs> so. The sooner you get behind, the sooner you can get caught up. That's right. So looking forward, the union actually have a rare Sunday early evening game coming up against Atlanta, Atlanta mm-hmm. on the, uh, the 2nd of July, four o'clock start. Uh, is currently in sixth place, but they are at 29 points, which I believe is 14 points behind the Union. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they haven't lost much recently. Only one loss in their last uh, six games. A lot yeah, of draws, but only one loss. Yeah, they are racking up the draws. A lot of draws. Um, you know, eventually, at some point, that's got to that's gotta stop. Which way it goes, that's the question. Um, and... and you know they do have some potent players. I mean, obviously they're sending two to the All Star t- game and uh, playing at home. Atlanta, you know their their record is tough there, uh, six one and three at home. In, in yeah, season. I think this is going to be a, a battle of the of the statistics. Like just straight across the board, they're not looking super strong, but their home record looks very strong. Right, so it's kind of yep. you know you put a buttered piece of toast on the back of a cat and toss in the air, which one touches the ground. Right. <laughs> um, so it's kind of like, which, which statistic is going to win out here. Um, and plus the union, we, we do have a little bit of a, I'll say a little bit of a natural rival rivalry, a little bit with Atlanta. I know we had some chippy games last season or was that two seasons ago with, um, gosh, or was mm-hmm. it three seasons ago? Uh, yeah, maybe it was three seasons ago. It was when uh, Harris was still with the team. 
and it got pretty chippy. Uh, I don't remember games. that game. McGinnon yeah. didn't got into it with. Uh, oh wait, yes I do. Yeah, right. Yes was I it... do. Didn't he get a red card in yeah. that game, and then yeah. Bedoya got a card? Or, or you yeah, uh huh. I do remember that. Yeah, you know? I do remember that. Yeah, I know we have of course, like it has turned over quite significantly since then. Exactly. But that, I do. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not necessarily the same team as it was back, you know, a few years ago. But uh, I think you know the memory still lingers, and I think uh, yeah. all things being equal, each team would just like to beat the other team. So um, yeah, we'll see. I think it'll be a, I think it'll be a, a pretty uh, interesting game here. Plus, Atlanta always has a good turnout, you know, with their fans. So yeah. uh, it's they do have a, a lot stadium. of energy. Should be. And it will be interesting to see what the weather, whether how the weather cooperates or doesn't with the, with the game. Is that an indoor stadium? I feel like that's an indoor stadium, isn't it? Or it has the option for a roof. I don't know. I thought it was outdoor, but I could be wrong. Yeah, because it's where it's where the Falcons play there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's where the Falcons play. Yeah, I don't remember. Okay, well, we'll find out. I, or I could just look I it mean, up as, on Google. As far as predictions, you know, as far as predictions for this game. Um, you know, with Blake not being there, with Lowe not being there, I mean, I feel like they're going to go with the four four two. Um, so they are going to be susceptible at the back. Um, but I, I just like we were talking about earlier, I really just feel like the Union are playing on the front foot a lot. I agree, and so it's going to be kind of an attack versus attack kind of a game. Mm-hmm. Um. I almost want to say a 3 3 tie, but I'm going to say a 2 2 tie. 2 2 draw. You know, okay. I, 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 just to see both both teams go off and, and, and run up run up some goals, I could see that. Um, I mean, I could certainly see Atlanta winning, winning this one because they are so good at home. Yeah. But uh, I, I do I do trust that the Union defense is going to do enough. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and even without Blake and Lowe. Uh, I think Martin, if Martinez is still there, I, 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 I'm confused by the Venezuelan national team call up. Like I thought he would have been gone for mm. longer, but you know, he's still kicking around here. So yeah, yeah, I'm going to go two two draw. All right. Um, well, Christy has texted me from Texas with her pick. Uh, her so she's going to predict a three one mil- union. What's that? I said two one union. <laughs> no, she's got to go with the uh, the three nil union. Um, score. I like that score. Yeah, I hope she's right. I like what you're saying about the Union defense, right? They're gonna the defense feels a little shaky with Blake and Lowe being out. Um, so I can definitely, you know, I would wager the cup of coffee. They'll go with the four four two. Um, but the story I like to tell myself is that you know whether or not you know Blake would have stopped those goals that you know got past Joe Bendick or not, you know, who knows, right? But I like to think that, you know, Joe Benedict is, is getting his his feet under him now. And I think that's a I, good point. I think, you know, this is now his third or fourth game he is, you know, starting uh, at know, least fourth in, in, on, in net. So I feel like maybe this is the game where he starts, you know, that vibe really starts to uh, get amplified. Where he takes the Neo step and he starts to believe. He starts to believe. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, or maybe Carranza lends him a copy of The Secret, but one or the other. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'd like to think that uh, uh, Bendik is gonna, you know, he's gonna, um, things are gonna really start to click. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with the tried and true, the 2 1 win for the Union. All right. Well, I don't think it's ever actually happened when many of us have, so- have no. picked the 2 1 win for the Union. Yeah. No, I don't think it's ever. Maybe they do. I mean, to be fair, I, I could certainly, per- certainly see the uh, the union just totally going off and scoring four or something like that. But uh, uh, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, it would be exciting. All right, anything else for this week, eh? Um, quick little anecdote to share. So our 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 globe trotter Christy is in Texas today. Um, she was up in the middle of the state pennsylvania or last weekend um but uh she and her mom are up in uh eaglesmere 
uh, hanging out for the mm-hmm. weekend and uh, they watched the, uh, the Miami game on Saturday, but they were uh, streaming the video uh, through probably, you know, I'm guessing it was through Apple, uh, but they were doing the audio, the local broadcast and uh, uh, Eagles mirror is a very quiet little town. And uh, <laughs> Christy was wondering if the, their, their screams and cheers were, um, and this is, I think only meant to be half of a joke whereas uh where their screams and cheers were scaring away the bears um <laughs> so very cool unless, yeah, the, one problem with the bears the, are union fans but. <laughs> the one problem with the uh the local uh broadcast on apple tv is i think it was the local miami broadcast or something oh no uh, no that was the orlando <laughs> game that i was watching and it was actually the Orlando broadcast. And I'm yeah. like, man, these guys are such homers. I want to hear the Union homers broadcast, not the the, my, the Orlando homers broadcast. <laughs> so <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad that they got to enjoy it. I'm glad that she got to watch one with Nancy. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she always likes to try to catch the games when she can. Uh, so we yeah. we bring the, the Apple uh, subscription so she can tune in with us. There you go. All right. As always, you can find us at our website, amorephillyunion.com. You could email us if you would like. We'd love to hear from you at awesome. pod at amorephillyunion.com. You can connect with us on Twitter at amorephillyu, Instagram, YouTube, amorephillyunion. And you can get our podcasts wherever you get yours, uh, Google, Apple, Spotify, uh, so please subscribe, like, comment, spread the word, help mm-hmm. us get our numbers up. Remember, mm-hmm. we're still trying to run the help us help mm-hmm. the you challenge. Mm-hmm. The sooner we get to a thousand downloads, the more money we'll donate to the Union uh, Foundation. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in for another episode of A More Philly Union. We're your host. I am Paul. I'm C. And I'm me. Yeah, opportunity is where, uh, or, or luck is where practice and, uh, yeah, forget yeah, how it goes. Like that. I should um, just edit this part out. Yeah, we'll edit this part out. <laughs>